Episode 9, Dominant Traits. The episode opens on Mel. She's in the padded cell that we saw Roche locked up in last season. She notices a note on the door, and when she reads it, the intro goes into a voiceover by Nima. In Nima's voice, we hear the words of the letter, in which he apologizes for the situation with Mel. What we're actually seeing on the screen, though, is Leighton taking fire in the fight that's taking place in New Eden. The sniper is still shooting at everybody, the same as in the end of last episode. Nima's letter continues with him praising Mel's intelligence. He does this a lot, where he tries to flatter people. While the Nima voiceover is happening, back in New Eden, Alex sabotages the track switch. She sticks in an expanding foam nozzle and fills the whole computer up with expanding foam. Ruth's at the helm of Big Alice, and she prepares a group of tailies for an attack. In Nima's letter, he calls his plan the Great Thaw. As his words are read, we see him assembling a giant warhead, we can assume of Gemini gas. In his letter, he calls for a time when we'll no longer need Snowpiercer. And he ends our intro with Snowpiercer, 876 cars long. After Nima's intro, we're taken back to New Eden, where the residents are still under fire from the soldier with the spade on their helmet. Javi joins Josie and Boki, as at the end of last episode, Boki was shot. So Javi and Josie carry him to the clinic. When they get to the stairwell of Town Hall, Javi splits off to find Leighton. We get some shots of Till moving from cover to cover until she eventually meets up with Oz. Two old partners back together again. Javi eventually finds Leighton and fills him in on what's going on with Alex and the track switch. He also tells Leighton of his plan to jam the signal of the explosives that are lining New Eden. Dr. Pelton works on Boki, and Josie offers him a blood transfusion. Nima arrives at the padded cell to talk to Mel. She demands to speak to Alex, but Nima informs her that Alex is in New Eden and in need of some parenting. Leighton and Sykes move towards Alex. In the chaos, Alex seizes the opportunity to stab Mouse in the leg with a screwdriver. When she does this, she's able to slip out the back door. Leighton, Leighton is able to subdue the guard that was with Alex. He gets the soldier's gun and is able to take some shots back at Mouse. He gets the gun, runs out of ammo after firing only one shot. He does manage a successful hit, though, with his one shot. Leighton and Alex are able to make it to Town Hall. Sir, back on Snowpiercer, Nima insists Mel complete the retrofit of Big Alice once the trains are connected. She refuses and even insists that it may not be possible on Nima's time frame. Nima says if Mel won't work with him, then there, he'll have no need for Big Alice. So he threatens to use the explosives his team has laid around New Eden to bury them in an avalanche. Till and Oswilder play rock, paper, scissors to see who's going to distract the guard and who's going to run around with the radio. Oz makes a plan, but as soon as he turns around, Till is gone. She left the radio on the ground. Alex and Leighton reach the radio in the town hall of New Eden. They have a short exchange, and Leighton tells Alex that Wilford is dead. They have a short back and forth about this. If She asks if Leighton killed him, and she would understand if he did. Um, but he says no, he ended up taking his own life. Nima praises Alex's mind when speaking with Mel. They debate using Gemini again. It seems to be an ongoing theme for them. And Mel compares him to an oil company that damaged the oceans before the freeze. Back in the clinic of New Eden, Josie gives Bulky a transfusion. Well, I guess Dr. Pelton gives them the transfusion, but the blood is going from Josie to Bulky. And while this is happening, she's kind of having PTSD of her time with the Headwoods. Oz fires up the radio and is distracting the sniper. He's running from position to position, taunting him, causing the sniper to expend a lot of his ammunition. Oz realizes the voice he's hearing over the radio sounds familiar, and it might be what he was hearing in the mountains. Back at Town Hall, Alex is in shock about Wilford. Outside Town Hall, a soldier passes by Javi. He remains hidden, and he radios to Alex and Leighton. He says a soldier's coming right for them. They brace for attack. Mouse attacks them, but runs out of ammo shortly after entering Town Hall. The soldier pursues on foot, 
shooting at Alex and Leighton with a handgun when they are met at a locked door. Leighton fights hand-to-hand with Mouse as Till sneaks up on Spade. It seems that Mouse might have the upper hand on Leighton when Mouse is shot. And we have a pull back, and we see that it was Till who shot Mouse with Spade's sniper rifle, having won the conflict. As that battle subsides, now all the soldiers are incapacitated. We learn Bulky will survive, and Javi continues to work on his jammer. Alex fills in the crew on the fact that Gemini gas, if it's deployed globally, will erode the atmosphere and kill everybody. Alex also thinks that Nima will derail Snowpiercer, if necessary, to capture Big Alice. We get a short scene of Nima installing the warhead in his missile. Mouse having escaped after being shot, I think twice, makes it back to Snowpiercer to fill Nima in on what happened. In the next scene, Javi has a breakthrough. He completes his jammer and is ecstatic. Mel and Nima go over the plans to reconnect the trains. In this scene, we see that the soldiers are accessing the arsenal of the late departed Admiral. We see them unloading boxes of guns, but we don't see them unloading boxes of bullets. Back in New Eden, everybody braces for the attack. A large group of peacekeeping forces enter New Eden. Mel is at the front of the pack with the soldiers. She's able to give Leighton a a nod of warning. Leighton screams, run, and the whole town is gassed. Many people are knocked out from the gas, but many people make it inside different cars. Now soldiers patrol the village, keeping people inside. At the helm of Big Alice, Taylor's stand guard. A soldier enters and is shot with a crossbow. Then a gas canister comes through the door, and all the Taylor's are knocked unconscious. Mel and Alex have a walk and talk, where it's revealed it was Mel's idea to use the gas. After previously being gassed, she saw it was relatively harmless in the long term, and thought it a better alternative to Nima's men storming the town with guns and shooting everybody. She also tells Alex that they won't be helping Nima, they're just going to appear to be helping. Back to back walk and talks here, Nima and Headwood walk through New Eden. A soldier that was killed in the conflict is shown to Dr. Headwood, and Nima seemingly offers the dead body to Dr. Headwood for experimentation. Josie and Ruth have a short conversation about injustices. Josie has more and more resentment building for the people that are fighting against them, and she thinks that they should use more extreme measures. Ruth reminds Josie about the difference between justice and revenge. As the next conversation unfolds, between Mel and Alex. The two of them are working on a radio trying to get in contact with Leighton, and it is revealed to Alex that Nima was the sperm donor when Melanie conceived Alex. So in a roundabout way, we learn that Nima is Alex's father, and this kind of pays off why he's been so interested in her. Mel keeps referring to Nima as the donor and insists that he is not Alex's father. As soon as this happens, Alex confronts Nima about being her father, and we are cut away to Leighton and New Eden. Mel and Leighton make a plan over the radio to retake Snowpiercer. Back in the conversation about Nima being Alex's father, he speaks about the difference between dominant and recessive genes, saying that a lot of the good things that she has are from him, as well as some of the bad things. We get callbacks to her being raised by Wilford. Nima's making a comparison like nature versus nurture. He claims to be her partner and understanding in how intelligent she is. Ruth and Leighton form a battle plan, and Javi turns on his jammer. After he does this, Leighton tells him that he wants him to move a bomb. Javi bombs some of the soldiers, thinning out the crowd. As Snowpiercer reverses into New Eden, Josie mounts an attack on the soldiers that are still alive. Josie has a showdown with one of the soldiers, And when she thinks she's about to bite the bullet, she realizes that he has no bullets. It's revealed that many of the soldiers are carrying empty guns, and this is kind of a callback to the movie. Somehow they force Snowpiercer over the track switch, so it's kind of irrelevant that they didn't do it. They derail the end of the train, and they come, like, worm in over the ground to where Snowpiercer, or Big Alice is, and they eventually do reconnect the trains. And I guess their plan is to just pull it out and hope that it pulls back onto the track. Out of the back of Snowpiercer, spill two dozen soldiers with hand weapons. And just like that, we've gone from 
hand weapons and crossbows to guns, all the way back to hand weapons again. It's kind of reminiscent of the battles of the season one. And this is probably because they're outside and they have room is like one of the most epic battles in the show. Like even Ruth gets some. Ruth kills like 10 people, I think. Like she's just swinging around a sword like all willy nilly stabbing this guy and stabbing that guy. Our heroes from New Eden press forward through the enemies and they're a large group of them are able to make it back onto the train. As this happens, Nima gives the orders and Snowpiercer pulls away. He also gives the order to blow the explosives so that he can cause an avalanche to cover New Eden. And when he tries to, he realizes that they've been jammed. He has a little hissy fit. And by the time he turns around to react, Alex and Mel have snuck away. The last scene is Alex and Mel sneaking off into the smoke of the subtrain. I thought that was a pretty good episode. Um, there was some great revelations in that, like Alex's father. And now the trains are reconnected out back on the track. So maybe our people from New Eden will join them and we'll end the season where we started. Maybe with an extra engine though. If you made it this far and you watched, uh, do the liking and the commenting and the subscribing and all that. A lot of you guys who are watching aren't subscribed. So it's about time I made you feel bad about it. So just subscribe. It's right down there. And like I said, thanks for watching. And I hope you enjoy next week when the finale comes out.